a nice horse. Hey, mister, get off me! Could this happen to you? Hi, I'm Scott Hansen, and I'd like to welcome you to my Horse Think video course, Self-Defense for Trail Riders. In this video, I'm going to show you how to stay safe while riding by teaching you to be alert and aware of your surroundings and how to use your horse to your advantage in the event of an attack. I developed this course after several people asked me what they should do if someone tried to grab them or grab their reins while they were out riding. Several women had told me how they had been followed by strangers and the only thing they could think to do was to gallop away. These same women wanted to know if there was anything else that they should do. Based on my experience, I knew I had the answers to these questions. Having been a mounted police officer and having been involved in training with numerous law enforcement agencies, I've learned how to use my horse to my advantage in situations that most people would never encounter. I knew that much of what I'd learned could be translated to the everyday trail rider. I began by developing a clinic to teach these techniques. When I asked participants during clinics how they would respond to various forms of attack, I discovered nearly everyone reacted just the opposite of how they should. This video is designed to share the information with a broader audience. You are going to learn what to look for, how to prepare you and your horse, and what to do to both stay in the saddle and use your horse to ward off an assailant. I will show you what to do as well as what not to do, and discuss with you what your horse needs to know so that he can be your best defense. We will discuss the importance of staying alert, recognizing signs of predator behavior, staying calm, voice commands, what to say, when to say it, and why, what the horse needs to know, equipment choices such as reins, bits, crops, and night latches, strikes, kicks, and punches, balance and retaining your seat. How do I know that your horse can do all of this and more? Horses have played this role with humans for over 6,000 years. Throughout this time, horses have served man in many different ways. Prior to the late 1800s, the horse was technology. For much of what we use machinery to do today, we used horses for in the past. They pulled ships through locks, barges up rivers, and were lowered into mines to work. They pulled passengers in carts, wagons, and stagecoaches. They brought home the dry goods from the store and transported the finished goods to market. And most importantly, they gave armies the upper hand in battle. The cavalry was often the deciding factor in any battle. A cavalry charge from Napoleon's troops was an awe-inspiring sight. Even as late as World War I, horses pulled cannons, moved troops into battle, and charged enemy positions. There are countless stories throughout history of the bravery of horses. So if a horse can be trained to charge into battle, he can certainly help get you out of a tight spot on the trail. However, you must have confidence in your horse, and your horse must have confidence in you. So let's begin by learning how to recognize trouble before it starts. I want you to be aware of the people around you, approaching you, and I want you to observe both their clothing and their mannerisms. We want to talk about being prepared and watching out what's out there on the trail. You can recognize a lot of these people because if you pay attention to their clothing, you can tell sometimes that they're not wearing what's appropriate for the day because they're too busy trying to hide something. They might have something underneath their jacket. They might be wearing a cap so that they can hide their face, some type of a stocking cap during weather when is isn't really appropriate for it. More importantly is the walk. All predators have a walk, and humans are no different. When you watch movies and you see the lions around the gazelles or the wildebeest, and you take a look at them, you'll notice that if the wildebeest are eating grass and the lions come walking through in what I call a rhythmic fashion, the wildebeest aren't alarmed. If the lions just walk like this, it's not a problem. However, if the lion turns and suddenly begins to stalk, every head in that place will go up and begin to start tracking those lions. It's because of the predator stalk, and humans have it too. You're going to find that there's a hiker out there, and he's walking along just at a normal pace. But you're going to find the guy that's maybe looking or waiting for you 
So he's going to walk along and he's going to look over his shoulder to see where you are and take a few more steps and look again, take a few more steps and look again. A hiker would probably just look over his shoulder one time to note you, walk for a little while, and step off the trail courteously waiting for you to go by. The predator is going to pretend a lot of things. He'll either do that walk or he's going to stand around looking at the ground trying to act like he's doing something waiting for you to catch up to him. When you see that kind of behavior, you need to wake your horse up. You need to be ready for him. Don't just sit there and kind of ride along and hope that maybe it's not. Wake him up. If it turns out not to be anything, well, no big deal. Your horse and you got some training. If it does turn out to be something, you're ready for it. These obvious attempts to act overly casual and inconspicuous are not normal and should alert you to possible danger. As a predator approaches, he is more likely to try to engage you in some sort of conversation as opposed to the casual hiker who simply says hello or hi and continues on. Let's review what to watch for. Inappropriate clothing. Predator type stalking or non-fluid gait. Waiting for you to catch up. Looking back at you frequently. Acting overly nonchalant. Avoiding eye contact. Attempting to engage you in conversation. Now if you observe some of these mannerisms, it's not a license to run someone down with your horse. But it is time to get prepared. Being prepared is the single most important action you can take. What does being prepared mean? It means that you and your horse are ready to react, and this includes both verbal and physical action. If you're like most people, you ride casually on the trail, not asking much of your horse. You and your horse are both very relaxed, perhaps too relaxed. In fact, some of you are so casual, you could almost be asleep and your horse would follow the trail. And even when you see someone approaching, you do little to change your behavior. This makes you vulnerable. What you need to do is wake you and your horse up and get ready to take action if needed. That person's coming down the trail and you're unsure of them. One of the things we got to do is wake up your horse. You do that by starting to ask your horse to move around a little bit so that he looks like he's ready to do something instead of just coming down the trail and he looks like he's half asleep. So you can back him up. You can move him forward a little bit, move his hips to the right or left, wiggle the bit in his mouth, but get him ready to do something so that he's ready to start going. Just because your horse has noticed something or someone on the trail, this doesn't mean that he's going to listen to what you might ask. So you need to start asking him to do something specific. What else does this do for you? It makes the predator aware that you are awake and you're prepared to do something. You are no longer asleep in the saddle. The easiest way for an assailant to get near you while you're riding is to ask you if he can pet your horse. I know it sounds innocent enough, and it is a common question. Innocent or not, you need to control the situation. One of the first things we're going to need to do with this is we're going to need to get a universal language of just this. Stop if somebody comes up to ask you if they can pet your horse. As they come up and approach and say, can I pet your horse, you need to say, no. Okay. They're going to try and engage you in some type of conversation. And one of the reasons they will do that is because if they can engage you in a conversation, you'll try to think of answers to questions, and that's distracting to you. So as they approach, if I say, can I pet your horse? No. Why not? Be careful, he bites. OK, that's a good answer. Know what you're going to say so that you're not engaged in a conversation with this guy. I don't want him coming up here and, and asking you, can I pet your horse? No. Why not? Why, doesn't he like men? And then he's right in here and he's got a hold of your reins. Okay? You're thinking up answers. The reason we think up answers is because that's what we're taught okay, from when we're little. So we get involved in that. He asks a couple rapid fire questions and instead of thinking about your maneuver, you're up there trying to answer a question. When you tell the person no, you need to say it loudly, firmly, and confidently. No, he bites, watch out. You want both the assailant and others to hear you say it. Even though no one else appears to be in sight, there might be a witness nearby on the trail. You want to attract their attention. This alerts them that you might be in trouble. They may come to your aid. You wouldn't want them to only have heard the assailant ask, hey, can I pet your horse? And then interpret your actions of defending yourself as unjust. If they hear your firm, clear voice, they'll at least know you're in trouble. Let's review what you should do when approached. Prepare your horse. Be ready to verbally respond. Practice what you want to say in advance. 
Speak loudly, firmly, and confidently. Use a hand signal. Next, let's take a look at some likely scenarios of what will happen when the assailant gets close to you. The first thing they will usually do is grab at the reins and try to pull on them. If they get this close, you must be prepared to not be pulled off balance and pulled out of the saddle. At one time or another, we've all had a horse pull us forward as they grab for a mouthful of grass. This sudden motion often causes a rider to be pulled forward and off balance. This is exactly what an assailant might do when they grab at a rein. However, there's a simple way to make unseating you much harder. It's called the rein brace. When someone grabs the rein, the usual instinct is to pull back, which forces a tug of war. The problem with this is that you're probably not going to be able to pull as hard as the predator, who can use his weight on the ground against you, pulling you forward and out of the saddle. In every instance in a clinic where someone has tried to pull back with arm strength alone, I've been able to unseat them, bringing them off balance into a position where I could grab their arm and pull them forward and down off their horse. Rather than pull back, you're going to learn to brace against the attack. The goal is to brace against the pressure with equal pressure so that if he lets go, you don't lose your balance. By bracing, you use your entire body rather than arm strength alone. The way to do this is to keep your elbows in and to keep your feet slightly forward and sit deeply in the saddle. Do not push down hard with your feet into the stirrups as this will push your seat up off the saddle and you will lose your balance. If you brace and sit deeply, the assailant will be pulling against you and the power of your horse, as this also causes him to pull your entire body down into the horse. As he pulls down on the reins, it will actually feel as if you were being pulled down into your horse's back instead of up and out of the saddle. Your horse will remain much calmer and be listening for your next aid. Let's talk about a little bit of the difference of equipment. This horse has split reins on it rather than looped reins. Should he get a hold of this, and take the rein from you, don't get in a panic. Most people will start pulling back real hard on that outside rein, and as they do, this guy will be pulling this way, and now your horse is in the middle of a tug of war. Hang on to that rein. You can even wrap it around the saddle horn one time so he can't get that, and even if he pulls this horse, just ride the horse forward. You're safe up there. He can't get to you. Don't drive the horse so fast that he ends up running over top of the guy or puts the guy close to you. But what can he do? So he goes this way. Big deal, just bring the horse forward. If he lets go of the rein at this point and tries to come in, just go ahead and ride your horse forward. While we're here, let's talk about driving your horse forward into and over the assailant. Many people feel that they could just charge over an attacker with their horse. But I've yet to find a person who's had their horse trained well enough to do it. Doesn't mean that it can't be done, it can with sufficient training but you need to know ahead of time if your horse will do it. As you attempt to drive your horse forward, the most common thing that will happen is the assailant will wave his arms or an article of clothing, and that is enough to keep most horses from going over the top of him. Also, if the assailant grabs your bit and pushes backwards, he can actually stop your horse coming forward. This is especially easy to do if you're riding with a curb bit or a curb bit with a connecting bar, since the assailant can simply grab the shank of the bit or the bar itself and force the bit back into your horse's mouth. Or on the subject of, of the bridle and the equipment and protecting the horse, let's talk a little bit about the reins. These reins on this particular <coughs> bridle are attached with a trigger snap. The only problem with a trigger snap is somebody can come up and let go of your horse's reins that quickly for you. Now you need to know, could I ride my horse with one rein? If you can't, you might want to try it a couple of times. More than likely, all you'll be able to do is go in circles. But it's better than nothing. It's a real easy fix if we want to fix this here with a little zip tie to just lock that in so somebody can't come up and, and take that off. These reins here are a real thick plastic. They're pretty good. They're difficult to cut. Leather reins, they're the easiest to cut. Rope reins, parachute makati reins, they're lots more difficult to cut. So we want to be aware of those things too. We wouldn't want somebody to come up, open up a knife, cut that rein, and now you can't control your horse. Let's review. Brace, don't pull. Tuck elbows in. Sit deeply on seat bones. Push your feet slightly forward. You've already learned that when an assailant grabs your reins, you shouldn't pull against him. 
you should brace, not pull. Now let's talk about what happens when the attacker gets close enough to grab you by the arm or by the leg. A lot of people think that if we get in here by this leg that we're going to be able to kick at this guy like this. But if you do that, he's going to grab your leg and push you off the saddle. So if you stiffen the leg, the seat goes like that and it causes your seat to come up. By letting your leg be a little bit loose but firm, pushing it back down as you can but not making it stiff, your seat doesn't go anywhere and that's the contact of your, of your horse. Yes, he can push you way up here, but hopefully by then you've already done a maneuver, but he wasn't able to just tip you off. If he pulls you this way, just let your weight sink down onto this hip, and as he begins to pull on your leg and your boot, it will help bring your horse right over on top of him. But he can't pull you down through your horse. I can lean all the way back to here and not take her off that horse. Let's see how that would look on the trail. And during the making of this video, we can see how Vito helped out by actually stepping on my foot. But what if the attacker tries to pull you off by your shoulder or from behind? We're going to talk about some different ways to help yourself stay up in the saddle. One of the simplest is to have yourself what's called a night latch strap or a sissy strap right here which will allow you to get a hold of the front of your saddle. You can put them both on an English saddle or a Western saddle. The other place is to just reach down and grab right in front of the pommel and take it there. That'll help if somebody gets a hold of you from back here and starts to pull you this way. You now have something to brace against and keep yourself up in the saddle. Just like that English saddle, we have what's called a night latch right here. Again, just goes through the pommel. can be made out of anything. This one's just a small piece of leather and it'll prevent them from taking you over backwards because it'll get a hold. I recommend it better than a saddle horn because when you put your hand on that saddle horn, sometimes it's not as good a leverage as like a suitcase handle that you can make out of one of those night latches. By just having an open grip, it's more like gripping onto a doorknob. You're relying on your finger strength. It's a little easier to pull you away from that than it is if you have your hand wrapped all the way around something. A lot of the western ha saddles have the great big horn for roping and stuff like that. That one too is a big uh, horn to try and grab with your hand and put your hand over top. So it's easier to just grab hold of that night latch. You can have one on this side, you can have one on the other side. We're talking about being able to grab a hold of that sissy strap or that pommel, but you can also get a hold of your horse's mane right there. You'll take your fingers and intertwine it in the mane and grab a bunch of it and actually come down this way there you go, like that, and get a big handful of mane so that it's all intertwined inside of your fingers and your palm. You'll be able to stay up there lots better. One of the reasons that we're not going to want to worry about trying to strike at this person, unless you've had some kind of really good martial arts training and can develop power from up there, the average person is going to be able to take quite a few hits on his back and head if he gets in here tight. So if you're worried about hanging on and pounding away at him, you're wasting valuable time that you could use your horse. And that's the key to this. Use the power of your horse. If he gets this far in and he reaches in here and he ducks his head and he's clawing at you, you can do a lot of pounding like that and you're not going to hurt him. You're not going to create anything that's going to cause him to really need to let go. One of the things that people will think about doing if they're out there riding with a crop or a whip is they're going to think, well, I'll just go ahead and use that. It's not much more effective to somebody who can block it all than if you tried to use your hand. If he approaches this way and she takes the whip and tries to strike him, he's just going to put a stop to it. So go ahead and swing, the, swing that whip. What we can do, though, is a little motion called an eye flick. And an eye flick is just the tips of your fingers being snapped like that. Your fingers have to be loose. And you're just going to snap them. And the reason we're going to go ahead and snap them towards this person's eyes is because anything coming towards our eyes causes two things. One, we're going to blink. We're going to close our eyes. Two, almost involuntarily, we will throw our head back. Where our head goes, our body weight goes. When that comes at them, more than likely, they will pull back from you a little bit. That's going to give you not so much pain for his eyes, but reaction time so you can go ahead and set your horse up to do something. So if I come into here this way and I get in here tight, all she has to do is flick me in the eye like that, which will cause me to either pull or to turn my head. Okay, from even this direction. When I get in close, that's the eye flick. Okay, 
just enough so that he wants to step back and give you time to now cause your horse to do, to do one of the maneuvers, either to go forward, swing a hip, whatever you want. But it will be enough to cause him to come off balance. Let's review. Brace, don't pull. Don't stiffen your leg. Weight your seat bone. Use the eye flick if he gets in close. Sometimes people will talk about wanting to side pass their horse into somebody, and, and that's fine. They can try it. Go ahead and bring your horse towards me. Good. If he backs away from you, that's great. But if he chooses not to do that, the spur gets turned into your horse right there. I have more power over your horse to send your horse away from you than you will have to send that horse over top of me. Let's review. Know how well your horse side passes. Don't rely on a side pass alone to defeat an attack. Keep the assailant from using your leg or spur against you. Next, I'd like to discuss one of the most powerful moves and one of the most important. It's a spin. The average person will probably not know which direction to take their horse. So as I come up and I ask you, would you mind if I pet your horse? Can I turn? No, this way. Thank you. Here, if you turn towards me this way, I can stay in here all day, speed your horse up. I can pick your pocket and take things out of it, go a little faster and open the circle. Even if you go out here like this, all I have to do is stay right in here and hang on to you because I'm on the inside or what's called the well. I'm in the well. It's the wrong place to turn your horse, but most of us are going to want to do that because we're going to want to face up to the assailant. So what you'll want to do if he approaches from this angle is just lightly tip your horse's head, okay, just that much, so that your horse is aware that if you were to ask him to go forward and bend him a little bit, he's going to turn towards the outside. Should the person come onto this side, we would just lightly tip right there. Now the horse is totally ready to go where you need to go without telegraphing to the person which direction you move. He won't recognize that you're doing any of this stuff other than maybe moving the horse's head. Okay? From this side, you'd automatically get ready to go the other direction. That way as he approaches, now ride your horse forward. The minute he approaches, you're right there and you can send him off. Okay? As far as your legs go, if I'm if he's coming in on this side, we simply want to use our outside leg, which will actually be the inside leg for the bend, but the leg away from him, just to help start the bend for the horse. And then your legs will both act in unison to help drive the horse forward. We want to wait, but we want our horse to be prepared. If he still won't stay away from you after you've told him to stay back, when he reaches for you here, you're going to make that horse go, even if he tries to get here, just speed it up. Just keep speeding it up until he gets bumped by that horse's hip. The faster your horse can do it, the harder he's going to be bumped away. So if we do it hard and fast, right when he reaches, reaches for you, it's going to happen really quick. Go ahead and go. <clears throat> so let's make sure we know what to do. As he approaches, set up your horse to move away from the assailant by turning his head. However, be careful not to pull the horse's head too far to the side, thereby impeding the forward motion. Bend the horse's rib cage by applying your inside leg at the girth. Have your legs ready to drive the horse forward. When he reaches for you or the reins, spin the horse away and roll the hip in his direction. As soon as the assailant has been dislodged, you can continue to ride away. Don't quit too early in the movement. Make sure he's been thrown clear, and then ride away calmly with your horse under control. What you need at this point is a horse that will go forward quickly and will do it while someone is hanging on to him. You might think for sure that your horse will do this, but I've run into a number of horses that have frozen or refused to respond quickly when they felt someone hanging on to their rider. So you must practice this with a mock assailant. And now, how would it look on the trail? Hey, can I pick your horse? Yep. Let's review. Prepare your horse. Turn the horse's head slightly away from the assailant. Use your inside leg to assist in bending your horse. 
Use your outside leg to move the horse forward. Open the circle as quickly as you can. Increase your pace. Allow the technique to work. Don't give up too soon. Often at this point in the clinic, someone will ask, why don't I just gallop away in the first place? The main reason for not doing this is because in many locations, it's simply not safe to gallop down the trail. Even on a trail that is conducive to a fast escape, how many riders can control their horse in an all-out gallop and then stop the horse quickly if they had to? What happens if you gallop around a trail and in the bend you find a parent and child hiking? Could you stop your horse in time? Galloping away at the appropriate time might work, but it isn't always the best choice, nor should it be your only option. The next move that we'd like to do is we're gonna do a move called take you on a date. And this one's a really nice one because it turns the tables on the attacker. And it's not a move that most people would even think about doing. But as a typical, typical attacker, somebody that comes along to try and take you out of the saddle, they're expecting you to fight or to pull back. And that's what most of you will wanna do. But we're not gonna do that. We're gonna take this guy on a date. And the way that that works is, is I'm gonna come up here and as I go to reach for the rider here, she's going to go ahead and trap whichever hand becomes available. It could be this hand, it could be this hand. But if I try to take her from here, she needs to trap my hand between the saddle, here, against the horn, wherever she would like, wherever she can get the most leverage. And we don't want to grab the hand, because grabbing the hand requires you to have a lot of strength. If I, if I let her grab my hand and I pull away, now I've got her too. We don't want to do that. We want you to just trap it. If he pulls back hard, let him go. That's what you wanted, was for him to, be, to move away from you. So we're not concerned if all of a sudden he pulls back, if you'll trap my hand. If he pulls back like this, well, you're already free of him. If he doesn't, we'll take him on a date. Go ahead and turn your horse down the other direction, please. Thank you. Okay. So I walk up in here and I say, hey, I need you come here, trap the hand and send that horse down the road. Go ahead, please. Go. And then throw the hand away because he's not going to be able to keep up with you. That horse had a Western saddle, but the technique will work on an English saddle just as well. Trap the hand on the pommel or on the withers. Don't grab the hand, trap it. When it's time to get rid of him, throw the hand away like this. So you come up here, trap either hand, and ask the horse to go. Let's see this technique on the trail. Let's review. Use this technique when the assailant gets in close. Trap the assailant's hand by pushing down hard. Don't grab his hand, trap it. Move your horse forward hard and fast. Don't pull back on the reins. Remember to let go of the assailant. Throw the hand away when you let go. Don't carry the technique too far. we're going to talk about now is if you're on a narrow trail and somebody's harassing you from behind or you feel they're trying to get up behind you to grab hold of you, how you can use the backup on a horse like this to go ahead and dissuade that. Okay, we'll just have the horse turn around. Go ahead and... This area right here obviously is the business end of a horse and most of us know it. It's surprising how much a horse can do backwards like this. Most of them can come backwards almost as fast as they can trot forward. And so if you'd go ahead and just back your horse up towards me, if I'm trying to step in here and I start to see this much of this horse coming at me, or I go here and that hip starts to follow me, or I step into here and she rolls the hip away from me right there, it's pretty tough for me to get up there and grab hold of that person. Now here's what it looks like up close. Let's see this technique on the trail. Let's review. Maintain control of your horse. Back up with accuracy, not speed. Watch the assailant and don't be afraid to look over your shoulder. Now that the trail ride's over and you're back at your trailer, 
What happens if there's someone suspicious waiting around the parking area? At some point, you'll have to dismount and load your horse into the trailer. This can make you particularly vulnerable. However, if you and your horse have done some groundwork, you can still use him to keep the assailant at a distance. Tell him to stay away and then keep your horse between him and you. One of the last places you might need to use your horse is when you get back to a parking lot and a trailer. At some point, you gotta get down off that horse and you gotta put him away. If there's somebody there waiting for you, that's the perfect time to approach him. Now, if you've done some groundwork with your horse, you're gonna find that your horse is just as good and just as handy on the ground for keeping people away from you than as if you were up in the saddle. For today's demonstration, I'm gonna leave a halter on this horse underneath his bridle. There isn't any point and me pulling this horse around by his bridle and maybe bumping him in the mouth with, his, with this bit when we can use a halter. But trust me, if you've schooled him well down on the ground and out at your trailer and you go to use this, he's not going to complain about being bumped in the mouth because he knows he needs to help you. So if that guy comes across the parking lot whether he wants to use your cell phone or get in your car, all you have to do is keep your horse between you and the bad guy. Hey, man, how's it going? Hey, what do you need? Hey, can't you control your horse, man? Yeah, I can control my Where horse, but you make, you make him a little nervous, so... Hey. Why don't you, what do you need? Nothing, forget about it. So you can see with a little bit of work, you can send that guy away from you. And in a minute or two, your horse is gonna come right back to you and just hang out. And that's a good thing. We want him to get excited. We want him to be acting like he's ready to really be a little bit out of control. That's what's gonna help make them get away from you. Doesn't change your horse, he just hangs out with you. Let's review. Train your horse in groundwork techniques. Stay calm. Keep talking. Position the horse between you and the assailant. Keep up with your horse. Don't stand still. Last but not least, let's discuss the issues of weapons. I'm often asked about carrying mace or even a gun. I can't tell you what to do, as this becomes a personal choice. But you do need to think about a few things. If you use a can of mace, what happens if the wind blows some of it into your horse's face? Do you know how he'll react? Some horses react wildly. Can you get the mace out, shake it, be ready to use it in time? Remember, the average assailant will not give you much warning prior to attack. If you do have it out and are holding it in one hand, can you ride your horse well with one hand and still use the mace? If your horse spooks, will you accidentally drop the mace and arm the assailant? Will you remember not to reach out to spray him? He might be able to trap your hand if you do that. What happens if he disarms you? These issues are even more complicated when it comes to firearms. In closing, there will always be a million what ifs. We can't address them all here. Remember, in any self-defense situation, there's seldom a one-punch answer. You don't learn just one move in karate, and you don't learn one move in boxing. Learn all of the techniques, and then see if you can put them together. Much like a dance, you must be able to transition fluidly from one move to the next. Remember, teach your horse slowly. This cannot be forced upon him. Your horse will be looking for direction from you, and if you fail to stay calm and direct him properly, he will make decisions on his own. There are certain training techniques that help a horse understand what to do. Just remember that a horse is more than willing to go wherever we point him with a sufficient amount of praise. And don't forget, you will get the most benefit and have the most fun by attending a clinic. If there isn't one in your area, contact us about organizing one. It's simple and easy to do. In the meantime, have safe rides and believe in yourself and your horse. That hurt. You alright? Yeah. My knee's not so good. <laughs> Sorry.
outtakes, <laughs> stepped on my foot. Oh, Vito stepped on yes, you? Yes, <laughs> he was standing on my foot. I just want to know if I can use your cell phone. I'm in front of it. Your victory.